what's happening y'all so i got everything set up i believe um you're gonna do the top five most dangerous dangerous cave dives brought to you from top fives i will have their youtube channel in the bottom of the description and we'll see how this goes hopefully i do not get a copyright strike i'm sure i will for the music just want to do a test on what i can and can't do so top five dangerous cave dives Number five, the shaft sinkhole in Mount Gambier, Australia, is a unique and dangerous dive spot, which leads to a massive network of dark passageways. It's certainly not easy to get to. That is a super tight squeeze. Super tight. All right, moving on. And requires a rappel down from a sinkhole to reach the water below. There have been a few fatalities here over the years due to the complexity of the dive. So far, the water looks absolutely beautiful. My thought looks awesome. Looks like they're diving side mount. They've already got some lines ran. From the uh, entry point to this that really opens up, it's actually absolutely beautiful. Number four, so they moved Eagle's on. Nest Sinkhole in Florida is another very dangerous dive spot, mostly due to its excessive depth. It is over 1,000 feet deep in some areas and has some very narrow and dangerous passageways. Eagle's Nest. That is over 1,000 foot deep. Eagle's Nest is one of the most dangerous cave diving sites in the world. Numerous people have died in the cave system. This is from FloridaGuidebook.com. Only properly trained professionals with first-hand knowledge of the cave system should even consider entering the Eagle's Nest sinkhole or cave system. I mean, it looks impressive to me, but that's just me. All right, moving on. If y'all ever see this sign, I am not a cave diver, but stop, prevent your death, go no farther. In fact, more than 300 divers, including open water scuba instructors, have died in caves just like this one. If you, in fact, you need training to dive, you need cave training and cave equipment to cave dive. In fact, without cave training and cave equipment, divers can die here. In fact, it can happen to you. Honestly, in my opinion, they should change it to you will die. Kind of like this uh, product causes cancer. Anyway, there's nothing in this cave worth dying for. Do not go beyond this point. Do not go beyond your training limits. Because even trained professionals die. Let's move on. 10 divers have died here since 1981. People who have tried to push their limits, but overestimated their ability. That is a rebreather, and it looks like he has plenty of bailout. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think I see four. No, I see three. No, I do see four. Man, that looks absolutely beautiful. By the time and money, I would definitely do some cavern stuff and then work my way up to side mount it looks absolutely beautiful i'll give it to all cave divers out there you guys are a totally different breed lots and lots of technical training a lot of math and science you know a lot of people ask me why i love scuba diving so much you know there's addictions and then there is uh I don't know what you'd call it, but it is the most peaceful, most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. And that is with all diving, whether it's the Mississippi River or the Ohio River or a beautiful, clear, 
warm spring down in Florida. All dives are great dives, five foot uh, dives and ponds looking for a firearm or something. It's always fun and beautiful and it's the most peaceful thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Um, anyway, move on. Lines ran. Absolutely beautiful. If you guys are interested in uh, scuba diving, Google. Wherever you live, I'm sure there's an instructor somewhere, and it is not that difficult to get your open water. Just make sure you do some research, ask around, but if you're, if you're all interested in doing some diving, get certified. It's uh, probably one of the, actually, it is the best decision I've ever made. Good group of guys, no longer really diving with the original crew, just because people get families, and it's not for everyone, but for me, it's the best thing ever. If you're interested, check it out. Do some search and Google, Google scuba diving certification in your area. Um, Nawi, I'm going to get some crap for this, but uh, if you find a Nawi dive shop in your area, for me, the, for open water, it's probably one of the better agencies. Around here, it's uh, SSI. There used to be a patty dive shop. And actually, I think there's still a patty dive shop around here. Actually got certified through PDIC, and they are no longer technically around. There is they changed their name for like the fourth or fifth time to Scuba Educators International, I believe. I believe that's what they changed it to. But yeah, it really depending on who you talk to, it does matter who you uh, get trained by. But you can always take advanced classes later on and figure out what instructor works for you. But Nawi is probably one of the better agencies around they're not really a uh i don't know put this into words they don't rush through a lot of stuff ssi is very 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 good but uh i did a stress and rescue class with a naui instructor and we went over some stuff and he's probably my favorite instructor ever but uh it could have just been the instructor a lot of times it's not the agency it's the instructor so that's just my uh input and my experience but i as far as training could go, you could just tell he knew all of the shit. So, you know, just my, my input. There's some great instructors, too, through SSI and uh, Patty. And I don't know what a Scoop Educators International reputation is right now, but uh, there's none around me, as far as I know. All right, I'm going to move on. environment looks so beautiful. They're zooming. So the reason I made this video, I see so many videos on scuba diving kills or scuba diving is dangerous or this most dangerous dive, hospital hole. It's just some random bullshit on the internet about how scuba diving is so dangerous. I'm going to tell you right now, scuba diving is safe. It's people that are dangerous and make poor decisions. And unfortunately, we get to learn from those decisions always dive within your training you can get a phenomenal amount of training just do your research and do it don't cowboy it and go 
diving outside your limits. There is that area where you're kind of advancing, but there's a way to advance in a controlled environment and figure out what you can or can't do physically. And when it comes to the science behind all this, just do your research and get the training. Because I don't want to see a federal agency oversee all of us scuba divers, if that makes sense. You know, we got vehicle registrations with driver's license. You got the FAA pilot's license. You got schooling for this. And a lot of that is governed by either a state or a federal agency, yada, yada. I think at this point in time, we've done a very good job um, within the community and these dive agencies because they don't want to see fatalities. They don't want to see accidents. That's why we have Dan. So you can report an accident to them or a close call to them. It doesn't have to be an actual accident. And they'll try to break it down, take that information so that we can all learn in the long run to possibly prevent it from happening again. And let's all dive. If you're a diver, please dive within your limits and always check your equipment. I love you all very much. So this is number three. That looks awesome. I've seen this picture before. It's gonna be awesome audio. Let's see where they're at. Number three, the Samason Hole in Thailand. Samason this dive is not Thailand. quite as deep as the previous cave, but it is considerably more dangerous, mainly due to its strong currents. Its currents are so strong that one diver actually surfaced many miles away from his original launching point. He would have been stranded at sea but thankfully a nearby fishing trawler rescued him. But there's another reason why this cave is so dangerous. Sounds like they were doing an intentional drift dive and he may have got blown out or pushed in a different spot. I have to pause this because that wind or the air, but yeah, the heat is going to mess this all up. I'll be right back. All right, y'all, I'm back. They're still on. It should be turning off momentarily. From now, I'm going to mute the mic, let this play out, and we'll see what happens. Bear with me with the audio. I know you guys don't want to hear a fan blowing the entire time. Over the past several decades, the Thailand military has used this site as an explosive dumping ground. It is now riddled with unexploded bombs and shells. The air is off now, so... It's a dumpy ground with unexploded bombs and shells. I'm not diving. Anyway, moving on. I guess it's safe if it's underwater. No, things happen. Things can still happen. I guess as long as it's not drying out. I don't know. I'm not a, a bomb expert. I'm going to make a fun, so if you all know anything about scuba diving, I guess Patty could make a uh, ordnance expl... Anyway. A, uh, <laughs> some kind of explosives diver class. No pun intended. It's not knocking Patty. Just, they have a lot of certifications. Ordnance disposal class or certification. Yeah, bless you can. Oh, man. Number two, in 2018, 12 boys and their soccer coach became trapped in the Tam Luang cave after it flooded. Cave divers had to circumnavigate the underwater cave to reach the boys, which proved to be an incredibly daunting challenge. The cave had just recently flooded, making the water very muddy. 
Cave divers had a hard time seeing in front of them, even with high-powered lights. Making matters worse, the passageways were so narrow that divers actually had to remove their breathing masks in some areas. Miraculously, all 12 of the boys and their coach were eventually rescued. Although sadly, one of the rescue divers died after running out of oxygen. Alright, I have to stop this, so... Regardless of everything is factual, in the documentary The Rescue, which was originally released on Amazon, I think you can watch it on Hulu and Disney for some reason now. I just swore it was on Amazon. But uh, it's a, a very great documentary on what actually took place. What it's called The Rescue is released in 2021. And regardless of if everything is 100% accurate in that, definitely you should watch it for sure. By far, the most dangerous cave dive in the world is the notorious Blue Hole in the Red Sea. It is so dangerous that over 150 people have died here just in the last 10 years. I know there's an archway that people try to go underneath. I don't know exactly how deep that is, but we'll get to it. It is essentially the Mount Everest of cave diving. Why is this dive so dangerous? Well, to reach the dive site, people must pass the Ark an underwater section which is 184 feet below sea level. The maximum dive limit is typically around 131 feet. Some divers are unable to cope with the excessive depth and have lost consciousness. It's talking about nitrogen narcosis, which is in the previous episode of this, one of the previous ones. Check that out. Put the right here, actually. Nitrogen narcosis, what he's talking about. People will get narked out of their mind. And a lot of times they're on a single tank dive at 100, and I think he said 80 feet. No way. No way. Even at 100, 100 foot, 130 foot, I like to have some kind of bailout, like 40 cubic foot pony bottle or your dive buddy, which that's not always, uh, depending on where you're at, always stick to the rule of thirds. Back bite and wing. I know he just said that that's 180 foot. I really hope they don't go underneath that arch. Okay, cool. Man, they gotta be narked out of their frickin' mind at that depth. If they're, if they're on air, I should say. There's no way I'm going that deep on a single tank. Alrighty, that was it. I hope you all enjoyed. So, 
Thank you for tuning in. The five most dangerous cave dives. So yeah. Let me know what you think. How much uh, he got correct and how much he did not get correct. I didn't fact check any of this. But the reason I made this video is because of all the things I see on the internet of scuba diving kills, the most dangerous dive. A lot of these great big YouTubers that over-dramatize things that are going on in the uh, diving world. Things that aren't dangerous at all if you stick to your training. So, thank you all very much for tuning in. It's Trey, Narc Divers. Let me know how I did. Hopefully I don't get uh, in big, big trouble from the Google, YouTube, and all that. But thank you all very much. I love you all very much. Until next time. It's Trey, Narc Divers, and I will see you all in the water or here again. Hopefully in the water.